photo or is it a picture? Um, we've done we've done two pictures. In like a like a fucking collage. No, no, just like two different ones with with two Testing. different texts, and then we're gonna see how they go, and then split test them and see like with different pictures and the same text, and then vice versa. Cool. So everything else is the same. The only difference is the pictures. Um, not no, not at the moment. We we've sort of we've put the text to suit the picture, if that makes sense. Okay. And then, yeah, yeah, and then we're gonna swap like not swap the text around, but we've got the next text that we're gonna put on the on the same picture. So anyway. We're gonna we're gonna test them that way. All right, cool. Yeah. My advice to anyone doing a likes campaign is to um would be to write think of the think of a to either do what he did is to try to make the writing suit the photo because the more creative it is, the more people are likely to like it. Um, but also if you can, so let's say you got ten dollars a day to spend, um, split test five different photos over four days or whatever. Find which photo is giving you the cheapest cost per post engagement. Then do the same thing with the headline. Then do the same thing with your targeting. And try to get those cost per page likes under a dollar and then under 50 cents and then even lower than that. You know, I've seen a few people in the team getting their page likes down to like 30 cents per page like. And, and these are people who aren't even running ads, but that's giving them 15, 16 people a day to add and talk to. Did anybody see the way that... um Who was it? Was it Chris? Uh, what he does with his... When people like his page to get them to message him, that was really cool. He, how does he do it? He, he goes to his business page and as he, as his personal self, he will tag people who've liked his page in a post and then put a link for them direct message him to his personal account. That way it pops straight up as a notification saying, Hey, Rara's tagged you in a post and you're like, what? They've tagged me in a post and you go there and it, it provides you a link to message them directly. And he's finding massive success with that. <coughs> Are you able to explain better than what I just did, what you told me, bro? Good, bud. How you going? Good, mate. Yeah, so all I did is um, basically just, uh, yeah, just tagged them with my personal account on my business page, used the link for the messenger um, for the business page and just say, you know, maybe ask them a question, um, something that they'll respond to, just to get them to actually send you a message. Because otherwise, if you try and add them or send them a message request, um, you know, they might not see that request or you have to wait a while for them to actually add you or whatever. So it's just more that instant sort of, uh, you know, getting them to that notification straight away so they actually see it. Would you mind doing a little, a little training video and uploading it to YouTube and sharing the link with me and I'll get it put into the BYE training? Yeah, mate. Too easy. I feel like it's a very effective way. Uh, could you do both ways? Could you send them a message, send them a friend request, and tag them doing this? Uh, yeah, there's not, nothing wrong with that. Um, it was just more just to get it straight away. So I think still add them as a friend if you want. I feel like Grant Cardone would do all of them and just like yep. 10 exit. Thank you, bro. I'd love to get that put into a training for sure. No worries, mate. Who's had some success with their likes campaigns? Who's getting, you know, cheap likes? Who, who's reaching out to them every day? <coughs> David Hudson, coughing. I know Brooke was having a lot of success with it. I'm sure others are. Maybe. Yeah, we are, Brody. Talk to me. Um, we're getting, uh, we've got, we've split to ours at the moment, our likes campaign, just to see different age groups. Um, and I think two of them I turned off two and these two are running it. I think one was running when I checked this morning at 20 cents and the other one's at 16 cents. Cost per page like? Yeah. Woo -hoo. So every single one of them I'm just adding as a personal friend, waving at them and then messaging them straight away. Good. Yeah. You feel like you're getting a lot of conversations in? Yeah. I feel like you've been taking massive action lately. You and I had a phone call not long ago and you said you'd spoken to, I think it was you. Fuck, hopefully I'm not butchering this. You said you'd spoken to like 30 people that day. Yeah. That was it. Um, yeah, that was at the end of last week. Can you remember anything that we spoke about that you think would be valuable for the team to hear? And did you, were you able to take action on any of it? Um, I actually did get somebody on a phone call after we spoke that night. 
Um, and that worked really well and they're quite interested and I've sent them the webinar. They're just deciding on whether it's suitable for them, but I explained about the $99 and that they can get it a refund if they choose that it's not for them. Perfect. They're actually fly and fly out, so they're, they're pretty keen to make another stream of income. And if not, you know their pain points over the next six months, once yeah. a month, to message them and say, hey, are you currently flying in or flying out? How's the family going? And just keep it going. Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. Beautiful. Thank you, Kim. You're doing amazing. Thank you. What about you, Kirsty? You had a bit of a, you've had a, a couple of, a couple of wins. How's your magic business going? Yeah, good, Brody. Um, I can't run likes campaign, as you know, but I've um, promoted my page and I'm getting about 20, 20 likes on our page a day. So I've been talking to many, many people. Good. Yeah, which is really good. What I've noticed is sometimes when you start getting heaps of leads, um, because you just used to it now and you know they're coming, you kind of forget the methods of what worked in the first place. Yep. So sometimes you need to take a step back, not reply to them and actually do like listen to a podcast on sales or watch an episode of Straight Line Persuasion, even just one, just to freshen yep. yourself back up and go, all right, boom, now I've got it. I'm going to get back into these leads again. Yeah. Cool. What about you, Peter? What are you doing at the moment for ads, mate? Right. Oh, in a second, I'm back. In a second, guys. Go on, Pete. Yeah. So I got my I got my likes campaign down to sixty three cents per like, um, using uh, Nicole's method of doing the interest. So you but, use that in a likes campaign. Yeah, in a likes campaign. Um, and one of them was, was performing better than the other. And then I duplicated it to, so I, I duplicated it and then scaled it to $11 and 11 cents. Um, and then I left them both on just so I could see that my, the, the dupe, like the one I was scaling could um, pick up a bit of traction. And then my, the likes just went to about $2.20. And then my, like my original one skyrocketed to about 93 cents. So, but you watch yeah. it every day, huh? You look at it all day. Yeah, of course. That's that's an issue. Yeah, I, I know that, but I like I want to keep track. You know what I mean? But sometimes you shoot yourself in the foot because you're like, "Fuck, what's happening? Shit's going on," and you kind of got to let Facebook sort itself let, out. It's four days, bro. You let it go for all right. So let's say yeah. if you were to run an, a normal ad at five yeah. five bucks a day, even myself. I've got send message ads running at the moment and I still want to let them run the course of a week, five bucks a day to let Facebook kind of like level itself out. So I would say the same even for a likes campaign sometimes. Yeah. Well, see. But if well, one's at $10 a day, obviously you don't need to run it for a week then. You can run it for four days. Yeah, exactly. That, that, was the, um, that was the thing. And the $5 that they had been, I think, about 10 days. Yeah. Right? So that's, that's why I was like, holy shit. So... Um, I was meant to, I was going to do it last week, but what I'm actually going to do now is I'm just going to take uh, your advice from last week and run a new, um, create a new ads account, right? Mm -hmm. And run a, a, the same, the same uh, likes campaign through that ad account. Because mm -hmm. um, me and Jess are, like, as I've told you, my, my business page is going to become uh, Je mine and Jess's business page. So Better. it'll be mine and Jess. Um, so then I'll then create another ad account for um, running ads for, you know, targeting uh, families and stay-at-home mums and stuff like that. Yeah, and a different so, pixel. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, man, so that, that's what I'm doing at the moment. And I'll, just, I'll see how that goes, really. Sometimes, is that me echoing on your screen, bro? No. Nah. Am I echoing? No, I am. Okay. Um, sometimes what you can do is, Instead of duplicating an ad, if you're worried, oh, I really don't want this to stuff up my ad, um, just recreate the whole ad in a new campaign. Yeah, okay. Because then I won't, I won't mess with your ad. And sometimes it just happens and you're like, I don't know if it's because I duplicated it or whether it was just going to happen anyway. Yeah, that, that's kind of what I, that's, that's where I'm at right now. I'm like, fuck. Okay, well, it is, but this, this is like, this was the same, uh, same picture. And same um, uh, copy 
that got me, you know, the results, you know, from a couple of weeks ago. And then I just, you know, went even further and split tested the interests. Um, so it made me think like, wow, have I done my dash with it? You know, in a way, yeah, but yeah. like, look, maybe it's just time to create something new and put something else out there. You know, how big is the um, audience? Um, oh, I have to, I have to get back to you on that one, bro. If you notice Think your costs are going up, it's very important to go to your columns and check the frequency. I love, yesterday when I checked, the frequency was at uh, 1.06. 1.06, that's okay. I feel yeah. like anything above 1.5 is starting to get a little bit high. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my ads guy used to let it go a lot higher, but my results were shit. And wow. I ended up being above and, 1. And that means it, it's just going in front of the same people, like the same eyes are viewing it, eh? Yeah. Yeah, okay. All yeah. right. All right, done. Anybody else got anything going on? I'm fucking sure so. Steve Foskett, I know you got shit going on. We're talking the other day on the phone. Um, you something good happened with your ad or something? Yeah, mate. I uh, I've been split testing um, a new ad for targeting FIFO workers. So I got some help from some other team members on writing um, my ad copy and got them to read over it and give me some feedback, which was really good. And um, yeah, set it up with five different photos and uh, it's still running at the moment, $2 a day for a week. Um, I think my best one at the moment is sitting at $3 um, per message. So Woo! That's good, mate. Well done, buddy. Sorry to put you on the spot and get you at coming here speaking in front of the whole... I just assume everyone can do it. Um, if everyone wants to give him a massive congratulations, a $3 message conversion is huge, bro. Well done. Congratulations, bro. Well done, well done. Yeah, thanks, mate. If anybody else wants to unmute themselves, if you've got anything to share about your ads, you want to ask any questions, or if you think of any, um, we'll go over them at the end of the call too. All right. Is there any wins? Yeah, bro. Can I just say, um, that video I was speaking last week about Josh's laughing video. Yeah. Um, so... It's actually gone to the point where it's had 4,455 100% video plays. 100%? Yeah. <laughs> wow. How many views has it had? Sorry? How many views has it had? It's had, it's had video, it says video plays of 19,000. Mm -hmm. um, is that more impressions? No, how much is it running at per day? It's running at, I think it's five dollars a day, but it's at and one cent views. cost view. Yeah, cost per three plays one cent. Wow, that's ridiculous. It's a thirty-one second laughing video. What? Um, I was talking to Brent the other day, and he said like, what they say is do one value video, then another value video, create like, then create a custom audience, and then a lookalike. But would it be better to just can I just create a custom audience and then run an ad from that? Because I already have an ad, a laughing entrepreneur ad running at the moment, but I just wanted to test different audiences for what we're doing. Test it all. Yeah. Do one to a lookalike audience, like Brent said. Do another yeah. one to the custom audience so they've seen him before. Yeah. And, and, see, what, and see what works. And don't yeah. be em emotionally attached to it if it doesn't work. Just keep, no. keep creating stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've got a folder at the moment. I was going through some of you guys in the chat might have seen I've been sharing old videos that I've been that I was doing and stuff. Um, and I found like two two ads in there. I've got another I think ten on the GoPro. And I've got more elsewhere. So I've got about twenty ads ready to, ready to go video ads. Um, and I'm really not attached to any of them. I, I assume when I test them all, three are probably not going to be allowed by Facebook, and then I'll be left with a few. And I would have to think three of them will kick off really well. And the other ones will get deleted. Um, and then, yeah, I've just got those three videos and just to keep creating more and, and testing and spend that time in the ads manager so so you actually know what's going on when you're tri yeah. trialing ads. Awesome. Thanks, Freddie. Are you reaching out to... See, it's hard because if they're just liking it because it's a guy laughing and then you're like, hey, do you want to start a business? Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, um, we've had a, a fair few shares. had about seven or I think seven to ten shares of the video. Um, but most of it's just likes, not really comments, but 
our ad, that ad's already running, the Laughing Entrepreneur ad, um, is already running, but like we get a few people, we've had a few leads coming from that, but I just wanted to see the different audience or, yeah, I was just surprised how well it's, it's done. So, and do you have what you need to do? Okay. This is what you need to do. Yeah. For six weeks ago, I created a TikTok account. I started putting up videos. One of them went viral. Out of that video, I sold three aces. I think Vaughn might have bought a trifecta. He's on this call. He had the cash, boom, done. The other person bought some skin cream and the other one got their refund. If your video, that video would be way funnier than the video of mine that went viral. That needs, is that on TikTok? Um, I have a TikTok account, but no. Um, I did do a very short version of Josh laughing, but I didn't get anything. But um, I was just testing with TikTok their different hashtags and where they come up because sometimes you get so many themes and then sometimes you don't. So I haven't really figured out that with TikTok. But I, I do would wanna... post a new video of him laughing every single yep. day until one goes viral. <laughs> yeah, I'll beat that Charlie girl. <laughs> yeah, I'm deadly serious. Like Luke Falzone and Alex... Yep. They've been posting on TikTok for like what seems like two months. And then I looked at one of their videos yesterday um, and in two hours it had 86,000 views. Why are getting nowhere near that? <laughs> no, neither were any of his before no. this. Okay. Hey, guys. Go, <laughs> Luke. How are you, guys? Um, 200K views. But three, four, we're posting every day. We've, I've posted 170, so just one. There we go. So you posted 170 videos before one went viral? Yeah. And how many followers have you gotten from that? Uh, 600 in like two days. No, 600 in two days, right? And now what you do is you get those followers, and now when you put up a video that's more about the business, you're going to get a lot more engagement on it because you've already got so many followers. Yeah, that's right. And it's long term as well. So these followers are going Instagram, they're going Facebook. And yeah, that's where it's heading. So that's why I'm just posting on there flat out because it's a new platform and it's easy to get growth. Even videos that don't do well, you still get followers like five or six or 10. So yeah. Would you say consistency is the most important thing on TikTok? I post three, four a day. <laughs> you do that on everything. So. I'm I've, like slapped off a little bit on the other platforms at like this one. I'm posting more because yep. I'm getting a lot of engagement. Um, so I'm going to pick up everywhere else. So good man. And you and I have kind of been like, we haven't said it, but we've kind of been there having each other's backs. So anytime you comment or, or put a vote, I do the same thing. So you, if you guys are about to open a TikTok account, reach out to somebody in the team and say, Hey, do you want to create one too? We can go anytime you put something up, I'll share it. I'll comment on it. That way it gets more engagement as soon as you load it up. So that's my advice for you guys um, about that. Um, Luke, how's your, your ads going? I mean, ads aren't always going amazing. Are your ads going all right at the moment? Um, how are you doing your sales at the moment? Are you doing phone calls or just messenger? What's the plan? Um, so I've changed a couple of things around. My ads are doing okay. I always want to get ads that are doing better than what they are. So that's something I'm really working on. Um, after seeing the result with that video on TikTok, that's where I want my ads to be now. So. I've seen how it just blows up like that. Um, at the moment, I'm doing sales a bit differently. Alex and I are creating a webinar, but I'm getting people on the phone more um, and not really sending them a webinar. I'm just getting them on the phone. So my goal is now to get their number straight away and ask them everything over the phone, what they do for work, where they want to be, like get their pain points on the phone and then try to get them to sign up the ACE the first time. If they don't, it's all good. Then I get them on the phone again. So that's what I'm doing at the moment. Just have a conversation as a webinar. Yeah, just have a conversation about everything and just get them to hear my voice and ask them everything that I would in a message on the phone. So powerful. Powerful. So the phone FaceTime works well. I'm doing that as well. Like if I ring them again the second time and they're a bit iffy on the, the A sign up, I'll FaceTime them. And then they normally do it. So do you speak to them any differently? I know in the beginning you're kind of just drilling their lives. Are you still just drilling their lives? Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. it's, 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 he's drilling in a different way now yeah, so at the start was like sales drilling now it's like drilling of you reached out to me let's make this happen come on let's get going like motivating rather than selling now yeah i just <laughs> want to get them on the phone and see what they want to do and i just i just want to show them this opportunity and okay it's, it's yeah 
So I'm trying not. I'm trying not to make it a big deal. I'm trying to get them into eights without making it a really big deal to them until they see it, and then that's when I'll try. I'll push them more. And do you, do you say things like, "What are you currently spending ninety nine bucks, you know, a month on that you could start investing into yourselves?" To be honest, that's where I have to go better with. I don't do that a lot. I don't do that. Um, I just ask them, "What are they doing for work, and where do they want to be?" In um. Yeah, in like in two, three years, where you see yourself being, and can you see yourself staying at that job? What, what, tell me something about your job you don't like. So, yeah, everybody's got a buying threshold, right? Risk versus reward, and they need to know financially and emotionally that this decision is going to outweigh any risk that could happen of them losing the ninety nine dollars. So, to get that sale, you need to tip the scales in your favor by saying to them. Hey, it's only $99. What are you currently spending $99 anyway on? And okay, let's say this, let's say I was my face was all over the internet. I was posting photos of my daughter and I was still trying to scam you out of your hard-earned money and you did lose your $99. Worst case scenario, or I am genuine about this and I wouldn't be putting my face all over the internet and you do actually learn some skills and maybe you don't make a million dollars. Let's say you only made 500 bucks over the next 12 months but it only cost you $99 to start the program. Is that not worth at least doing the trial? Sold me, bro. Perfect. No. Did that help you guys to hear it like that? Because it really is just how you frame the conversation because we're all selling the same thing, right? Just some of us are saying it a little bit differently. You, sorry, bro. Do you say that on the phone? Yes, you could. Absolutely. That's what I'll, yeah. That's what I'm work. That's what I'm doing at the moment, and that was perfect. Like how you did and, that. And you should split test instead of just getting on the phone and ranting. You should know in your head. All right, I've tried this. That was shit. Now this. And then you should have a, just a, a clear path. You know what do you do? How long are you doing it? Why are you still doing it? How much are you currently spending every year? You know what's your profit and loss? Like how much are you in front every year? And they'll be like. Oh, I don't know. I've, I've never even thought about how much I'm in front every year. And you go, oh, really? Well, you definitely need a coach. You know, really, like, be that figure of authority, not like figure of authority, like telling someone what to do, but someone represents somebody who's respectful, who has that knowledge that could actually help move their, you know, their lives forward a little bit. Because having the courage to get on the phone is 90% of the battle. The other 10% is that, you know, that, it's kind of like an art. You don't want to be too pushy, but you don't want to be too soft and you want to educate them at the same time, right? It's 100% the way to do it. And, 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 but you also want to cast, cast vision. So you want to say, all right, uh, what are we going to say their name? Let's say Andrew. You're going to say, all right, Andrew. So we've chatted on the phone. You know, I know you've been in carpentry for a while now. You've got three kids. Now, believe me, I get it. You've got no idea who I am. You don't know me for a bar of soap. You've never made money online before. You said you don't even own a computer. So at the moment, you're a little bit scared to pull your bank out and pay. Am I right? They go, yeah, yeah, I'm right. Well, I was in your exact position. But for me, when I found out they had step-by-step -step training and I could refund my money if I didn't like it, and I was able to do this part-time while working my full-time job, it was a no-brainer. I knew I wasn't going to get another opportunity like this. Does that make sense, Andrew? Yeah, it does. All right, well, you said you were in carpentry, so you must have enough money to invest $99 a month. What are you currently spending? Your, do you drink on the weekend? Are you smoking cigarettes? Are you eating takeout? Well, none of that stuff is going to help you. And if you want to be the best father for your kids, you need to do whatever's best for yourself first. And that's this program. That's working with us. And you're not going to be alone. You've got a whole community. You've got a whole heap of people here who are carpenters just like you. But really, the only difference between you and them is they took action and you're still there with your wallet in your pocket. What do you say? Do you want to pay the $99? Let's have a crack at it, right? And then I love to use the other one, which is um, some people, Brian Hodgson said it, um, some people's pockets are so full of excuses that they can't fit any fucking money in them, right? And I love saying that to them because it usually makes them laugh a bit. And I say, so I know it's easy for you to continue procrastinating right now, but I promise you, if you let me get off this phone call, and you don't get involved with the trial, that's it. Like, I'm not going to keep chasing you up and, and 40 years is going to go by and you're going to waste 80,000 hours at a job that you, that you could be replaced in at any minute. And you could have changed all that for a simple $99 investment. You know, I'm here investing my time into you on the phone right now and I just need you to meet me halfway. Can you do it, Andrew? 
And unless he says yes straight away, you know, keep looping and then eventually just leave an awkward silence until he has to say something. He has to say either, oh, yep or no. And then even then, if you've got the confidence to do this, say, all right, I'm sending you the link now and have him, have him sign up on the phone. Pull his card out, put, the deep, put you on loudspeaker and sign up right there in front of you. I'll hold your hand through this whole thing just in case you hit any snags during the sign up process or the page doesn't load correctly. I want this to be smooth sailing. So I'm actually going to stay on the phone with you while you do this. Right? That's how Brian Hodgson built his business. Brian didn't have Ace. He didn't have Gaz. He didn't have these systems. He ran ads, told people he could help them make money. They commented how. He called them on the phone, told them about the trifecta, about a magic, and sold them a magic over the phone. And then, he, he did the exact same thing for every single one of his downlines and built them all to 6A for them. But then he realized that he, unless he keeps doing that, he can't fucking holiday because now it's all his responsibility. So that's why he created, you know, joined a platform that actually taught them how to do it, right? But just to give you some perspective that you guys have got a whole entire platform here. You don't have to do the whole thing. All you need to, all your biggest job is to do is to sell ACE. Every bit of energy is just to get that ace sale. Pull the card out, pay the $99. Because after that, you know, it's on your coaches to sell them on a magic. So hopefully that makes sense. Does it, do any of you guys have any questions in relation to anything I just said about talking on the phone, how to get someone on the phone, how to get over common objections, anything like that? Yeah, I've got one, bro. Yep. Are most of your ace signups, like what's the time span you get them on the phone? Like, is it normally when they reach out to you, is it like straight away or is it like 30 days? I never used to get mine on the phone. I built my whole business signing people up inside their Facebook messenger. I've only just start. I'm, now I'm like, if I'm signing people up in messenger, what can I do if I start getting them on the phone? Now I've just started getting them on the phone. Uh, basically, um, straight away. I'll, I'll, I'll ask them a series of questions. Then I'll jump on a call. I won't sell on the 99. I'll build rapport and I'll say, listen, you've got to watch this video. Like you have no idea the stuff that seriously, the secrets that I'm about to share in this video, you have to see it. But you do not want to miss out on this. Otherwise you're going to be working forever. Like, can you make the time to watch it today? Yeah, man, fuck, just send me the video. Just hurry up and send it. It's basically what they're saying to me. Um, and then I send it through. I go, do you get the video? They go, yep. Okay, you're going to watch it. What time? They say six o'clock. I say, perfect, watch it at six. I'm going to message you tomorrow at 10 a.m. to see what you thought. All right, mate, cool. And then usually they send me a message. Hey, man, can you send that video here? Thank you so much for your prompt call, whatever. Um, I, I don't have the courage yet to tell them it costs $99. <laughs> um, I, haven't got, I haven't crossed that self-limiting belief yet. So I just let my video do it still. So you don't say nothing. You let your video do everything. Yeah. Like, I know you get them to that video, but so everything's in there, what they need, what you need them. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just, in my head, I feel like I'm going to retain more Enagic buyers the more times I've spoken to them through the whole process, even before they've bought Ace. So yeah, I, I think I talk to them. They watch the video. Once they've watched the video, um, I get them on the phone again to sign them up to Ace. Then once they've finished step two, I get them on the phone again. If they're skeptical, but still interested, or they need to ask a partner for permission, I'll get them on the video. But if they're keen, 100%, if they're like Taylor and Alex, who are like fucking ready to sign the paperwork right away, I'm not going to jump on a video called so much energy. I'll just jump on the phone and get the paperwork sorted out. So it really depends on how much, you know, how much you, you need to nurture them through the sale, I think. Yeah, that's which that's how I'm trying. That's the way I'm going to go on the phone to that point, like what you said, and go take it from there. Because you might find you're not doing the whole, you might not be like seamlessly, I don't know how to say that word, but you might be doing everything right, pain points. You're the man, you can look after him. But then when you tell them the $99 part, you could be butchering it. Yeah, totally. That's, yeah. That's, and... There's another thing as well. It's like getting them, like what you said, getting them on the phone too. So that's what, yeah, I want to master to get them on the phone. And for me, I feel like when they come in and speak to me, it'd be like a month or 
like a month or two, then I'll just want to jump on. Like I'll, I'll send them a voice message. They want to do it. They want to pay it and do it. So I'm finding that like they they reach out. They, they, when I used to send the webinar, they'll go cold a bit after the webinar. They won't really reach out again. And then I'll leave it for like a week or two weeks, but it's been 30 days and then I'll reach out to them and then they just want to do it. So yes. keep them there. Does that make sense? Yes, it's definitely um, good to have a system set in place. I don't have one, but it would be good to have a calendar written down where you're like, all right, I'll follow up these people individually for two weeks. But after that, once a week, they'll get my broadcast messages. Yeah. Okay. I think that would be okay. You know, for two weeks, follow up from three times in the first week, twice in the second week, and then they just hear from you once a week and broadcast. And that's, I would say that's pretty well your job done. So signing, sorry, bro, one more question. So signing them up to ACE, you don't jump on a phone call? Yeah, well, I've already jumped on a phone call now. I've already jumped on a phone call before I've even sent them the webinar. Okay, so they have, they're not up to ACE yet. So when they sign, so before they sign up to ACE, you, don't, you jump on a phone call with them, yeah? Yeah, I'll ask them a couple of questions in Messenger. What do you do for work? How long have you been in there? If I can tell that they're like at lunch or at home, I'll say, what are you doing now, man? Do you just want to jump on a call? It'll be way easier. Yeah, that's okay. Not a big deal. Not a big deal. Yeah. All right. And then if they're not real keen to jump on the phone, it's like, fuck, well, they're going to probably pull out of a magic anyway. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Anybody else? Did that raise any questions for anyone else? If you don't want to unmute yourself, you can put it in the chat too. I hope that's been helpful for other people to listen to. Surely that must have been really, really helpful for some people. Cody, how have you been going, mate? I know you're always making lots of moves. What are you doing at the moment with your ads, your sales process? Yeah, just recently just turned everything off. So I yep. started, started absolutely fresh. Mm -hmm. I now got like nine... Nine uh, ads just got approved last night, so I split testing a few and got a new funnel up, likes campaign, retargeting an old ad. So, so all systems go this week. Good man. Keep, continue trying to do that. And then if it doesn't work, just concentrate on one thing at a time. Just like, all right, fuck. All I'm going to do is try to get this send message ad, the cheapest yeah. cost per post engagement. That's all I'm trying to do right now. Yeah. All right. Hey, the funnel, the funnel's, not, funnel's going good there. Uh, all at one cent per engagement the first two just trying to get that bottom of funnel video firing good so i've been Perfect. testing that and if that doesn't work this week i'll film another bottom of funnel and and yeah for keep, the people who are doing funnel funnels video. your top of funnel your first video um should be at around five cents or under cost per through play yeah that is yeah it's pretty it's nearly near to that two cents i think perfect you know the yeah. cost per through play is a good way to tell how good that that first that first video is um, yeah. But so there's cost per through play and then there's cost per engagement or cost per 10 second view. The cost per through play is definitely the best one. Yeah. So they're both working well. That's why I know, I know they're working. Well. I just got to uh, stuff around with that bottom of funnel until I find the winning bottom funnel. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I've gone back to just basics for me. Um, I've got an interest, a lookalike audience, which is rather big, like 300,000. Um, and then I'm at the moment I'm split testing Three ad sets, three different copies. Everything else is the same. All send message ads. They're all at about $6 a day. Um, right. I'm going to let them all run the course of the full week. And then I'm going to look at the cheapest cost per result, i.e. message, the cheapest cost per 1,000 people reached, and the cheapest cost per post engagement. And nine times out of 10, all three of those will be the same ad, and that's the winning variable out of them. Yeah. Um, and then... If I find the winning one, what I might do then is take that copy, duplicate that ad again, and then create three or four different versions of the same copy. Um, and that could be as simple as moving certain paragraphs up and other ones down. And, that'll, that, and, and I'll know which way it's better by the cheapest cost per post engagement, just to get a little bit more juice out of that ad. So you, you then I'll your, go to you, the photo or the video next after that. So you, you test your copy multiple times, multiple, multiple different ways. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Sweet. Because it all makes a difference. Yeah, it does. You know, it all makes a difference. And the easiest way to test that is usually um, if you've got a bunch of smaller posts at a dollar a day and you just use the paragraphs instead of the whole thing. Yeah. Then you'll know which paragraphs are good and which ones are shit you can take out of your ad. Oh, I know. Yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> right. 
Otherwise, there's this thing, um, called, and this is for another training. Actually, I'll put it in the advanced training, a dynamic, a dynamic creative. It's called dynamic creative. And what you can do is you can upload 10 different copies, 10 different videos, 10 different headlines, 10 different call to actions, 10 different like buttons, everything. Put it all up there and Facebook will, will generate all different versions of them together. And then at the end, we'll tell you which versions work the best as one ad. That's pretty good. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Which is pretty intense. Yeah, like, and you can literally go in and say, you can go, all right, headline. And it will tell you which headline gave you the best results. All right, copy. And it will tell you, yep, copy five gave you the best results. And then you just grab the best headline, the best copy, the best photo, the best everything else. And then you go create a brand new campaign with your winning ad. Right. This stuff gets pretty deep. <laughs> that was dumb, Brody. Right? Yes. Brody, so with the dynamic creative, I watched that video. Um, I just want to know with the ad budget, can you probably, can you touch base on that? Like what, what is there a specific ad budget with dynamic creative? Is it, is it more for, for, for a larger ad budget? For a dynamic creative, I, I wouldn't bother testing for anything less than $10 a day. And if you are going to test it for $10 a day, I'd still want to test it for two weeks, to be honest. Um, yeah. Because the more variables you're testing, the more money Facebook has to spread over all that different shit. So if you're testing 10 copies, 10 photos, 10 headlines, and you're only doing $5 a day, there is not enough budget to really get any results on that. Does that make sense, guys? Mm. Okay. So that's a great question, Peter. So I'd yeah, say sorry. to bare minimum $10 a day and for two weeks. Or five dollars a day for a fucking month. So do we do we cap that? Do we cap that? Like mm -hmm. say you know put on a hundred and say fifty bucks for ten ads to run for two weeks, or do we just let it run its course and then you know make a decision? Never cap anything. Month? Huh? Never cap anything. Just always yeah. know in your own head how much you can afford to spend per day and let it run until you're ready to turn it off. Yeah, sweet. Because I noticed that that a lot of the ads um, now I know this. We've spoken about this, um, but it, it a lot of the, a lot of the ads do give you the option um, whether they have a budget. And like from my understanding of that is, if you have a if you set a budget for Facebook, it means you, you you're having that means you only have a limited amount of money to spend. So Facebook will not reward you and will not show that to the right people. Is that right? Well, if Peter and I run the same ad and we're both spending $5 a day, but on my ad, I've said, listen, I can only spend $5 a day for a week. And Peter hasn't said that. Facebook's going to give more reach to Peter's ads because they know if they reward Peter, he must have more money to scale that ad. Yeah, sweet. Good question, Pete. Good nice. job, brother. All right. Okay. So... Hands up anybody who feels like they're struggling with their pitch. They're struggling actually talking to clients. Right? Not many, but a few. All right. Well, I want you to write this down. It's on Audible and it's called Pitch Anything. I'll write it in the chat. This was a suggestion by, I think it was Shane Carlson. He's just done a training for us, which I'm going to go into in a moment. Um, but it's very important to not spend too much time. It's good to do personal development on random shit, but it's so much better to do it on the things you actually need help with in your business. So listening to this book, Pitch Anything, is really going to help you with how you talk to your leads. And, and when you start reading it and listening to it, on the way to work, when you're stuck in the toilet on your phone. I, I'll tell you right now, when I was at work, I used to just sit in the portal loo. I didn't even have to go to the toilet. I was just listening to Jim Ron videos. Like that's how badly I wanted to be successful and not push fucking wheelbarrows. So that's my advice to you. Um, obviously he suggested how to win friends and influence people is, a, is, so, is such a fucking amazing book to get your head around the, the, the right way to speak to people and to understand that influencing is a good thing if you've got a good product for someone. Because what you're doing is you're trying to influence someone to buy something that they're too scared to fucking buy because they've got these beliefs about buying stuff, but you know that the Enagic product is the best thing that you could possibly have in their house, right? 
And the other one that he said was a straight line persuasion, which he spent thousands on to buy before we all got access to it for free. You know, we can all watch those 10 episodes of straight line persuasion um, for free in the BYE training. Um, so I haven't watched it in a long time and I really need a refresher on it myself. So Shane Carlson, I believe at a minimum is a 682-2. He might even be a dash four. He did a live one hour and a half training call on my very good friend, Garrett Francis's team. Garrett reached out to me and said, bro, check out this video. You can share it with your team. Um, because obviously I've shared trainings with Garrett now. Um, and that's kind of like, when, you can, when you've got something that's valuable, all of a sudden you can kind of barter with that information because not everybody gets it. And then you can share it and then they give you stuff and, and now you guys have got access to it all. So, you know, adding value to yourself is very, very important. Um, so it's being added into the BYE training. I believe it's going to be, it's going to be either sales or it's going to be organic sales because he's done his whole business organic. But the same rule, organic means not running paid advertisement. It means selling to just people you talk to, right? At the gym, doing home demos, whatever. And the way he explained it was actually pretty cool. Myself, I have self-limiting beliefs around organic, organic sales, clearly. Because over $2 million worth of Enagic sales, one of, maybe one of those was to someone I didn't speak to through the internet. So clearly, I've got some subconscious beliefs here that are telling me people aren't going to want this in real life or people aren't going to want the product for just the product. There's, there's something in here that's stopping me from actually going and talking to people. And that's what Shane teaches in this video. And he does it really, really well, the, the, way, he, um, the, the way he talks about it. So if you believe in Ace and Enagic, um, then it, it would, if you believe in Ace and Enagic as much as you say it is, then it should be a pretty good deed to pass that information on. Like, why aren't you passing that information on? Um, and he says, you know, how a lot of people have got this stigma around, oh, no, I don't want to bug my friends. I don't want to bug my friends. Um, but the way he explained it is, well, if you've got a life-changing fucking water machine, um, is it really bugging them by just saying, hey, man, like I've got this amazing thing. Feel free to check it out if you want. You know, I know that your partner's struggling with this. Here's a video. Check it out. Up to you. Do you think what? They're not going to invite you to Christmas dinner. What? Oh, Mum's going through the list. If everyone's to invite, no, nah, we're not fucking... Don't invite that nephew, Johnny. He tried to sell me a fucking water machine. No, they're not. But it's just the belief systems that we've told ourselves, how people are going to judge us. Yes, the internet is very, very powerful. But if all of us were able to just sell to one family member and help them start drinking K8 water, that would be fucking 300 units sold in one month. And you'd all get that trip on the fucking yacht that I promised once we hit 250 group sales, right? Because... I mean, I've sold a machine to my dad and I've sold a machine to a friend who invested in me because she seen me speaking on stage and my dad heard about the water at the Unify event, right? So these people that you think, like my dad, who'd fucking hate and not care about this magic water, if they heard about it the right way, they might actually get a machine, just so you guys know, right? And they can finance it. And if it's a family member, just get it on an e-payment. Like it's nothing. Um, so he teaches you how to do it. So if, if you guys, how many of you guys right now know about a movie that's out at the moment that you haven't seen, but you want to go see it in the movies? Anybody seen a movie yet? Some, I don't know what, what's out there at the moment. There's, um, oh fuck, I've been to the movies. Hustlers, that movie Hustlers. Um, there's a few other ones out there, right? How did you hear about that movie? Because somebody told you, hey, there's this really good movie out. You got to go see it. Me and the missus watched it because they believed in the movie. They're not worried about whether you go to the movie and then you hate it and then you're not friends with them anymore because you sold them this shit movie. So what's the difference about the fucking machine? If you believe in the machine, tell people you believe in the machine. They don't have to go watch the movie. They don't have to buy the machine. But if you fucking really like it, tell people about it. Well, you're going to go watch the Titanic for the first time ever and not tell no one about it so they die never watching the fucking Titanic. Miserable sods. Right? I love that. that information. Why not? That. I promise to do it more now on. I'm going to start... You know what? I go to the gym and I just walk around like a 
what I don't know. I haven't spoken to one person in my whole fucking gym. There's 120 people in there at any one time. I should be talking to all of them, not trying to sell them everything, but at least starting to build connections with these people so they feel comfortable enough to say, why the fuck are you drinking out of a three liter bottle? Surely no human actually needs to drink that much water. I've been meaning to ask you this whole time, but you just didn't seem like you wanted to talk to anybody in the gym. But now that we're talking, what is it? Wow, like you might ask. You see that movie Titanic? Well, it's a bit like this, let me tell you. Right? You get it, guys? Okay. And this is how he pitches it. Let's say he's got a free weekend coming up. He'll think of a list of 10 people, friends, ex-business associates, whatever they are. At least he doesn't have to do it anymore. He did it like three or four times and then those people did it and now he doesn't have to fucking do it, right? But he would call these people and be like, hey, Johnny, what are you doing tomorrow? Johnny, nah, nothing, man. No, nah, why? All right, sweet. Make sure you pop around to my joint around seven o'clock. We'll have some drinks. Bring the chips. I've got this. I'm launching this new thing I want you to see. Like, launch what? Listen, you've got to come. I've got eight other people coming. If you don't come, you're going to miss out. I'll see you tomorrow at seven o'clock. Ciao. Boom. Done. He does that with fucking 10 other people. Six or seven of them rock up. He shows them the magic machine. And his biggest bit of advice is this. If they start trying to go into logical, um, molecular hydrogen, science level, he goes, don't even get into it with them. You're not going to sell people on machines about the science behind it. You just need to talk to them about emotion. Say, listen, this machine is changing my life. I feel amazing. I've got so much energy. I don't exactly know how it works, but it's been around for 45 years. I'm going all in on this thing, regardless of whether you guys want to be in it or not. I know that I feel great. Here, try some of the water, right? That's it. If they want it, great. If they don't want it, that's fine. He said he got to 682-2 through passion, purpose, and emotion, not through molecular hydrogen and titanium fucking plates. He said, as soon as they start asking me questions like that, and I become Bill Nye, the science guy, no one gives a fuck about what I'm selling. And he's literally, and, and nobody here has to do that if you don't want to. But you've got the power to do that. If you can't afford to run ads, you could have, and if, even if you don't have fucking friends, go find other people who don't have friends, who would rather have friends. Go put a notice board on in the shopping center and say, hey, got no friends? Me either. This fucking Friday, I'm inviting 10 people so we can all have nine more friends and I'm launching this fucking little thing. Come have a look. Those nine people who buy a machine just have a fucking friend, right? Honestly, there's so many ways you guys could do this. Get creative. Um, all right, everybody on this call, I want you to imagine how good it would be tomorrow if you sold a K8. Now, maybe you're already making sales, but let's just say, boom, tomorrow they message you. They said, I've got the cash. Let's go. I want a K8. And you've sold it. You reach out to your coach and you go, bros, I got one. I reached out to Rara. I sent him that video. I, I thought, fuck it. You know what? If I would tell them about a good movie, why wouldn't I send them this water demonstration? I know I loved it. So I sent it. And they said they've been looking for one of these machines. They just didn't know where to get it. They didn't think they could get it in Australia. But they've got the cash. They're ready to buy it. Do you know how many people that is the truth for right now? Right? And imagine how good that would feel. Imagine them receiving their machine and then drinking that clean K8 water for the first time and how much they're loving this product, how good it makes them feel, how they're not getting headaches anymore. Their gastrointestinal issues are gone. You know, they're feeling they've got energy again. The soreness in their tendons has started to go. All the things you've helped them with. Now imagine that $600, $720 bonus check going to your bank account. Green, and magic, $720. Boom. You just got a fat check because you sold your first K8 machine, right? How good that would feel. Now imagine that person goes and does the same thing two or three or four times. And over the next three months, you get another four 720s deposited into your bank account because of something that person did. Can you start to feel how big this could be after two or three years? How many 720s you can start getting deposited? How many kids under the age of five now refuse to drink anything else out of their sippy cup at school, but mum and dad's K8 water? Because they won't drink normal water anymore because it tastes like fucking chlorine and the little kids can taste it. Now the other kids at the school want to drink all your kids' fucking water because they don't want the chlorine water their parents give them. And now they tell their parents, I'm not drinking that shit. And they buy K8 too, right? The power of this thing, word of mouth, be passionate about what you're doing. 1.5 million machines sold. 
there, there are three to four billion people who can afford what you do right now. There's only 1.5 million in magic machines. There's still three or four billion people out there who can afford a product. Ladies and gentlemen, you can do a magic for the rest of your fucking life. You can, you can continue to sell this for the, if in 47 fucking years, they only sold 1.5 machines, 1.5 million machines, you guys are going to be just fine getting to 682-3. Every single one of you who want to actually get there, you can do it. And it starts tomorrow by going throughout this business different, with passion, with real purpose, understanding the power of being 682-3 and those bonuses, you know? There's so many people living in third world countries selling a magic, making $200,000 plus every four weeks. They were able to build a business of thousands of people where the cost of a machine took them six months to fucking earn. We live in fucking Australia, New Zealand, Canada and America. What the fuck is our excuse? We don't have one. We are limiting ourselves. We should be talking to more people. We should be becoming product experts, but more importantly, becoming an expert on the product, not to tell people about the science, but to be so confident in what we're selling that when we offer it to anyone, we've got passion and purpose. That's why I become an expert as much as I can on Facebook ads, because it makes me confident that if people join my team, out of all the teams, they'll have the best training on Facebook. So I'll talk to way more people because I know what they get. I want you guys to have that same passion tomorrow. When it starts tomorrow, if you've been speaking to three people a day, you speak to six. You've been speaking to 10, speak to 15. Go all in. Send out more webinars. If the webinars are converting, reach out to your upline. Get your own webinar. Create your own one. Reach out to five or six other people in the team, some of which who you think are a bit more talented than you, and say, hey, can we create a webinar? Can I interview, interview you? So I can send it out in a broadcast to my subscribers so they can see more people are involved. Reach out to somebody else in the team. Say, can we do a joint go live? Find out who's in your area this weekend. Let's catch up at the cafe. I want to turn my phone off and I just want to mastermind with you guys and talk about different ways we can sell these machines and, and make money with Ace. What, can, what could you be doing more of? Because we can all do more. We can all try more things. We can all make a shit ton more money. So much. You put it in the bath and fucking swim with it. Pull your KA and an Esper in there, throw all your hungies, and just fucking swim in it. You just can do it. I'm telling you right now, you can provide any life you want for you and your family if you go all in on this business. Anything you're confident and certain about is easy to sell. Anything you are confident and certain about is easy to sell. Where does confidence and certainty come from? It comes from learning, and practice learning and practice so all day every hour you get take it in teach it you know speak it throw it back out as much as you can retain that information get confident because it's going to create certainty and when you're certain people become certain than you Fuck, five minutes all right here we go Whew. why aren't people buying they don't have clarity in what you're doing this can come through your content your ad or your script or your phone call. Luke, this could be for you. You could be jumping on a phone call and they're listening to you, they can hear your passion, but they're really not certain about what it is that they're, they're actually buying. That's why the webinar is powerful. Because I get so fucking passionate on the phone, if I start explaining shit, I'm gonna get out of my heart, into my head, and start going into features and benefits and this and that. And then when you start talking about features and benefits and logical reason why they should buy, they start thinking in their logical brain and you know what their logic's going to fucking say. This is a scam. This guy's screaming at me through the phone. I don't want it. So the more you can stay away from the logical reason why they should buy and the more you can get into the heart, which is how many kids do you have? What would it mean to you to spend more time with them? I want you to imagine a life like this and cast a vision for them and then say, okay, now I'm sure you want to know how this actually works. Instead of me spending an hour on this phone with you, mate, I want you to actually see this so you can learn more. Here's the webinar. Check it out. What do you reckon? Boom. Done. If we all did that, this would be the biggest magic team in fucking six months. We'd surpass everybody if everyone did it. <clears throat> Is what you're offering actually going to solve their problem? Sometimes someone might read your ad and think, all right, this sounds like it's kind of for everybody, but is it really for me? Don't write an ad to everyone. 
write an ad to someone, one person. Don't write it to everyone. Your content, it's not for everybody. It's for one person, your ideal client, your perfect customer. Your script, it's not for everybody. The sales are the same, but you've got to make it relate to that one person. <clears throat> Will this help me to achieve blank? You know, that's what they're thinking. When they're reading your post, your ad, your script, your phone call, is what this person's yelling at me through the phone, is it going to help me achieve blank? And you should know what the blank is before you've even jumped on the phone, right? <clears throat> Your ad and your pitch must be crystal clear on what you're selling, right? Don't leave too much up to the mystery. If they want a mystery, they go watch Scooby-Doo. They want to know what the fuck you've got. Your customer is always thinking, is this for me? Is this for me? So you as a marketer need to always be thinking, how do I make them know it's for them? The only way you can do that is by knowing who it is that you're targeting. Now you have to know who it is that you're targeting. I know. I know, I'm targeting 28, 36 year old, male, Australia, Canada, mining, construction, hardworking, has kids, doesn't spend much time with the missus. If he doesn't get out of this job, it's probably gonna cause a massive wedge in the relationship. Kids are kind of forgetting what he looks like because he's working away from work so much and his knees starting to fucking hurt because he's been you know, working in labor that long lately. And his dad and his dad's dad did all the same shit. So. That's all he's ever known. He's got no experience in marketing, none. He's got a laptop, but when he pulled it up last time, a moth fucking flew out of it. <clears throat> That's the guy I'm talking to every single day in my content, my ads, in my script, in my videos, and in my webinar. It's all congruent. Ask yourself, have you been that congruent with your marketing? <clears throat> Speak to one person in your copy. It's okay to say no to others, to get super clear about who your program is for. We get scared that if we write this, it's gonna scare away people. Perfect, that's what you wanna do. You wanna scare away some so you can work with the right one. Customers want to know if this is working for other people. It's very important if you get someone on that phone call, <clears throat> when they tell you what they do, you go, no shit. An electrical wholesaler. We've got a guy in our team. His name's Brent. He's traveling around Australia with his family now. He used to do electrical wholesaler. I can't believe you do the same job. If he was able to do it, you're going to be able to do it, mate. Um, I'm looking for, I'll, I'll find your video of his. It's probably on the webinar. Testimonials work. They don't even have to be in the same fucking team as yours. If they're selling an magic and they've had success, use them. <clears throat> People are obsessed with reviews and testimonials. Make sure you've got your t the team every couple of months to go give fresh reviews on your Facebook page. People do check it. it. Get an accountability group within the team. So, hey, let's all do a little testimonial video for each other about how amazing the program is and what you've learned. Send that out in many chats. Send that out in little videos. <clears throat> a lot of clients do not trust you. How do you build trust? Putting your face online, stories, content, phone calls, video calls, and showing up every day and providing education through your posts. If you provide education and they're learning from you every single day, actually learning, not just airy-fairy stuff like say yes three times and a miracle will happen to you today, like actual real shit that's gonna fucking help them, right? Teach that on your page. Um, and then, you know, you might do that for three months and they might say, listen, I've actually implemented two or three things that you've said and it helped me a lot. Could, is there any way I can pay you? Do you have a program? And all of a sudden, you don't need to chase anywhere near as hard as what you guys are now. Has anyone got any questions before we finish the meeting? All right. Well, I hope that was helpful for you guys. It's nine o'clock. I'll put the recording in the team meetings and go kill it. Much love.